My name's Jim Stein. I'm the LA Fish Guy. Welcome back to the new, old, shorter version. Who are you calling short? Of LA Fish Guys. Are you ready? another episode of LA Fish Guys. You're back at my house. It's been a while. Uh, we're going to be doing a big lighting change today. We're going to be switching from my original ReefTech LEDs to Kessel 360 WE, which essentially are little Canon LEDs. We're going to put eight of them in there. Should go pretty smoothly and figure you guys might enjoy the ride. So come along. All right, it's time to start moving forward. Uh, what we have here are eight Kessel 360 WE LEDs. Um, each one of the, each pair of these is going to replace one of my other lights. So I've got four lights in there that are going to get replaced by eight lights. And I put together a little mounting system that will allow me to angle the lights in different directions. Um, consists of a ball clamp, uh, a little mounting bracket, and essentially what's going to happen to make this easy so I don't have to screw it in the light rack is I've made these little aluminum plates that will allow me to clamp this together onto my existing light rack. And my light rack is made out of this aluminum framing here. So the idea is, is that the light will actually clamp onto this frame using this little bracket that I made. Um, it's made with aluminum. It has these little hem nuts in them so that the screws have a place to thread into. So I've already got a handful of these assembled. Uh, we'll take one of the lights. We've got a little ball. We've got a little sleeve someplace around here right here. We've got this little sleeve that goes inside the ball and then we've got the screw that goes through the sleeve. A little locking washer down there to keep this from spinning on the light. Screw this into the light. Now we've got a little ball set up there. And we're going to take a little bracket here, a little mount base for the clamp and screw that onto our bracket. Clamp it onto our mount. Get the little washers back in place. Now you may be wondering where the rest of my clamps are. They happen to be on some of the fixtures that are in there. Um, there's two fixtures in the middle of the tank that I have angled so that I can focus the light. The idea is that we don't need the light on the glass. I'd rather have the light aimed where we need it. Uh, so that's kind of the idea behind the mounts and also the idea of the way I have my lights hung in the tank. So now that we've got that done, the next step to do is going to be go, to go into the tank and take a PAR reading. This is a PAR meter and it measures the light output. Um, and we're going to take a little reading to see where our lighting is at now or where our PAR level is at now so that when I set the new lights up, we don't give them too much light. One thing about LEDs is they put out a lot more light than people realize and there's a tendency to want to run them at 100%. But when you do that, you end up leaching corals and making things really unhappy. So we're going to read our existing light output and then when I set the new lights up, not only are we going to match the color of the lights, but we're also going to match the intensity so that I don't shock the corals by giving them too much light. In fact, I'll probably start out a little bit lower in intensity than what, I'm ha what I have right now and acclimate them to the new light and then raise it slowly over the course of a few weeks. So the next step is to go to the tank, take a quick PAR reading, then we're going to disconnect the light, remove it, set up two lights, we'll adjust the color, and then we'll carry on with adding more lights one fixture at a time. So for those who are not familiar with the lighting system that you currently have, do you want to tell us a little bit about that first? Sure. So we have is four ReefTech LED lights. Uh, I've been running them three years now. I think I've been running these lights, maybe four. Uh, in any event, uh, they're on a light rack, an aluminum light rack, and it's on an electric lift. So if I push a button, the lights raise up. 
So now that you've seen the lights, I got to lower them back down to normal operation level, and then we'll do a part reading. So. Time to do a par reading. A little sensor here, which we're going to drop into the water. Um, I'm going to drop it onto one of the first layers of rocks down there. Visible light in the wavelengths of 400 to 700 nanometers is the energy source for photosynthesis. And this is also called photosynthetically active radiation, or PAR. And we're getting a reading that fluctuates between 176, 180, 190. I have an awful lot of uh, surface agitation, so the readings are kind of erratic. A better method for testing light levels would be to turn off the water pumps to achieve as placid a surface as possible. All right, next step is to grab a couple lights, rig them up, shut down a light, and fire those up. Be right back. With Neptune Systems' new cloud-based control, Apex Fusion, you can control products from Ecotech Marine and their Radeon LED with an ease never been seen before. Right from the dashboard, you get a graphical user interface that allows you to adjust the time, the intensity, and the lighting mode of your Radeon LEDs. You can even use it on a mobile device, and you can add clouds and lightning. Also, it controls the Vortec pumps. Right from the dashboard again, you get a graphical interface that's very familiar, allows you to change the intensity, the time, and even the mode that the Vortec pump is in. And if you want to compare that to another pump, or even to the Radeon LED, that can be done with these as well. All of this is with the Apex, Apex Fusion, and the WXM module from Neptune Systems. Are you still tumbling bio pellets? Tired of constantly replacing your GFO? Or trying to grow algae in your refugium? And you still have algae problems? Get real! Real filtration, that is. Algae scrubbers from Santa Monica Filtration will turn this into this by growing this weekly. Two styles of scrubbers, the hog and the surf. Both are extremely easily installed and noticeably effective. You want results? Algae scrubbers are the answer. Visit santa-monica.cc So first thing to do is uh, remove one fixture. So we're going to do that right now. The old LED lighting consists of four ReefTech brand enclosures. These units were attached to an aluminum plate that sat between the aluminum rails that make up the lighting rack's basic frame. The ReefTech LED lighting consists of three controllable colors of light, white, blue, and royal blue. The new Kessel LED lights will offer Scott much greater control and a broader spectrum of color. Next up, we start mounting some lights. Scott will use two brackets to clamp around the aluminum frame. His articulating mounts will be secured to these pair of brackets. All eight lights will be mounted to the horizontal aluminum frame. Since the light frame rises and lowers, this also gives Scott an additional level of intensity adjustment. Well, we did a real good one. We dropped a screw in the tank. Fortunately, there's stainless steel, but 
still need to find it. With the issue of the open top tank being obvious, Scott's challenge now is to redo or rearrange the complex collection of intertwined cables and power cords. All right, so these lights, they daisy chain. You have one that's set up as a master and then they all daisy chain using a little, like a headphone jack or the type of jack you'd use to plug your iPod into your car. So right now I'm just trying to rig up the four lights so we can fire them up, get some additional light on here, um, and then adjust the color. I think I've got done. I just want to make sure that I've got all my connections right. So input, output. These things are already wired up to my Neptune Apex. So we're going to, you and me, I set up a base profile in there to fire them up. We're gonna have a little bit of a mess up here until I clean the wires up, but right now we're in the get things fired up phase, so uh, we'll worry about cleaning up wires when I get the rest of the lights out of here. And with just four of the Kessel LEDs positioned and the wiring set up so that those first four are actually operational, let's take a break and see how they look in the tank. So we're about halfway done with the tank. We've got half the tank lit with the Kessels, the other half is lit with the old LEDs. The one thing that's very apparent is the glitter line. If you look on this side with the castles, you can see there's an awful lot of shimmer. The other side, while there is shimmer, it's obviously not as apparent. So now we're about halfway done. That is going to conclude this part. We'll keep moving forward, so stay tuned. In the next part, we'll tackle the other half of the tank. <laughs>